Welcome to Pittsburgh Sports Live. I'm your host, George Michalowski with Pittsburgh Sports Now. I'm here today with Carl Ludwig and Mike Vukovkin of Pittsburgh Sports Now. Uh, tonight, we're going to be talking some pit football recruiting. As uh, Pat Narduzzi and his staff have been on fire. Welcome to Pittsburgh here. Sports Live. And we've got some overlapping audio here. So uh, we'll start this one off with, with Mike Vukovkin and Carl Ludwig and myself, George Michalowski. Tonight, we're going to be talking pit football recruiting. Uh, Pat Narduzzi and his staff have had a huge month of June, had some more commitments today roll in. Um, we've got four unknown commitments at the time. So uh, Mike and Carl, you know, big month of June. How's it been going? Break it down for us. I'm working Carl's, Carl's bottom. I'm going to watch my language here, but uh, we're, we're busy on the coach Narduzzi and the staff are keeping us busy on the weekends. That's a good thing. Uh, it's usually the case uh, in June. He's made this, uh, Pretty much a annual thing. I believe they're up to 15 or 16 commitments this month. Uh, it's kind of crazy. They're, uh, they have a formula working right now as far as scouting guys, reviewing guys, don't taking commitments too early. Uh, and then come June is their time to pounce. They might take a couple kids – uh, early on in the recruiting process, if they were, if they're, you know, pretty sure on the kid, uh, but uh, the key is always getting these kids to campus. They don't want a kid committing uh, unless he's been here, uh, sees the environment, because the last thing they want is decommitments. And the key is, uh, as I've always said, to th their biggest battle is getting kids on campus. Once they do get kids to campus, things usually work out because of uh, what they see and what uh, these kids get a chance to see that the uh, pit football pro program uh, has a chance to offer. Yeah, I mean, it's just, yeah, yeah. So it's just been like, I mean, look, six recruits in the first window, uh, five last week, four this week already. I mean, just at this point, so, I mean, it's, it's steady. Um, I mean, there has been some, there have been, there have been bigger names. There's been no like, like massive four or five star guy yet. But I mean, there's plenty of guys out there who can still have that effect. And it's just been a lot of guys who might not have like the, the name brand recognition right now, but obviously the pit staff is super high on these guys. And um, I think all of them at this point could be huge contributors down the line. I, I think it's a very, very, very steady class right now, very steady, very sturdy class of guys who can, really carry on that that pit brand at this point right so before we get into the two guys that uh you know we know committed today the two linemen uh mike uh, i think you've got some some news for us do you uh, know anything else about some uh, unknown guys right now yeah uh as our policy is we don't uh we won't tweet out who committed uh until he gives us permission or he does it first himself but after Pat got the uh, late commitment tonight, which would be the fourth one, uh, you know, I made my usual uh, messages to kids that uh, visited and some other kids, uh, you know, there were previously here. And uh, one got back to me and actually told me it was him that committed. Um, uh, I won't say his name, but I'll give you a clue so people out there uh, don't think I'm BSing them. Uh, it's a kid that was here this weekend. Uh, I'm going to call him an athlete because he has a chance to, um, uh, he actually just gave me his phone number and said he wants me to interview him in 10 minutes. So uh, we'll see how that plays out. But uh, uh, he's from a state that, he, he's from, uh, uh, what do I want to say? Uh, what the hell? He, he's from Florida. Uh, he's a guy that plays both ways and, uh, he's an exciting guy. And, uh, uh I, I guess I'm going to be talking to him about 10, 15 minutes. So we'll see if we wrap it up here, but, uh, it'll be interesting to see what position, uh, cause I can't say this yet cause I haven't talked to him. What position Pitt sees him playing at? Uh, my initial guess would be that, uh, he would be a DB, but that is, I guess, uh, still to be determined. Uh, if it does, uh, if it is a DB, that means that Pitt really, really likes this kid. 
Um, it gives them three for the moment, and I would I, I would anticipate possibly uh, possibly a fourth, and that would definitely uh, wrap up their uh, DBs for the class of twenty three. There you have it. Some uh, some live commitment scoop coming to you, courtesy of uh, Mike Vukovkin. Thank you for joining in uh, to Pittsburgh Sports Live. I'm your host, George Michalowski. Uh, in case you missed the, the intro, uh, tonight we're going to be breaking down all things Pitt football. Uh, Pitt football recruiting. It's been a busy month of June for Narduzzi and staff. And, uh, you know, that brings me to our next point, today's commitments. Uh, Pitt picked up two offensive line commitments today in Ryan Coretta and Colin Van Roy. Uh, so, Carl, you know, what, what's the deal with those commitments? What are they going to bring to the Pitt program? Yeah, well, I got, so Ryan Coretta was a, is a big time target for them. I mean, he's a big 6'5", 310 pound kid from Ohio. I mean, both of them are from Ohio, which continues that pipeline of, of linemen coming from that state across the border into Pittsburgh. I mean, I mean uh, Ryan Coretta had some big time offers. I mean, he had Michigan, he had Michigan State last weekend for an official visit. He had Kentucky, Tennessee. I mean, he had some big time offers for him. And, uh, Pitt was able to snag him out of there. I mean, he wasn't, he's not like a hugely, he's not like a high three or four star guy yet. I mean, he's around a mid tier guy at this point, but he's a guy who should be a guy who can come in and, and, and make an impact probably year two. I mean, he can come in and challenge for a, a tackle spot. He's a big, strong kid. And then uh, Colin Van Roy, uh, he's, some might call him a reach at this point, but he's a guy who they just started talking to. I mean, he just had the offer this month. Um, came in for camp, impressed during camp. They saw him live in camp and he impressed, uh, had that offer from uh, Coach Borbley. So, I mean, he's, he's another big, strong kid who can come in and might, he, he might be a little raw right now, but he can come in and he, he can fight for a position with that, with a strong D line or O line room. And he's just, it's just two big, strong kids from Ohio have pedigree. Both of them have that relationship with Pitt's coaching staff right now. So it's just, it's, it's not two huge names, but two guys who, who Pitt, tends to go for and tends to have major success with. I mean, it's not, it's not reaches per se, but it's two guys who fit the system well. And I think both of them will, will do well at Pitt. I talked to both those guys, and it's interesting, the one common theme uh, with this uh, George and Carl were they talked about the impact that the kids, uh, a lot of the super seniors had on them on their visit. Uh, and he, they both termed it the brotherhood that they felt – with the existing offensive linemen that stayed. So, uh, you know, th th they're getting benefits of guys like Jake Cradle and uh, Carter Warren and Owen Drexel and Marcus Minor. Those guys uh, staying around, Gabe Hoy, staying around uh, for another year. Uh, those guys are going to help Pitt on the field this year, and they're already helping them off the field as far as uh, recruiting goes and you know we'll see how these guys pan out I, I it's not a surprise that they got two linemen everyone speculated that uh, coming into this weekend they had none they're going to be losing a ton after this season as I mentioned all the super seniors so they need to restock that position they got two more and I would look for them to get at least uh, two we'll get into this a little bit later as far as uh, what other positions they're going to recruit but uh, you know, they're done, not done recruiting that position. Look for uh, possibly two to three other uh, offensive linemen still to come. Interesting. Yeah, and it seems like, Carl, I know you mentioned the Ohio pipeline maybe uh, starting to roll in for Pitt. You know, both these guys being from Ohio, two big pickups. Uh, so now, Mike, I'm going to go right back to you here. Today there was another decommitment, you know, this time coming from Shelton Lewis, uh, three-star defensive back. He committed to Pitt just a few weeks ago. So, you know, what happened? What happened here? Why did he commit? What, what was – did he decommit? What was the story? Well, this is a tough one um, in the sense that did he decommit? Yes. Um, but I will also say that this shouldn't be looked at as a negative for Pitt fans. It's not a normal decommit. What happened here is, you know, I'll be, uh, you know, pretty straight – Shelton Lewis would still would still be a Pitt Panther if he didn't make the decision to uh, visit North Carolina last weekend. Uh, he committed to Pitt, and then after he did that, he made a visit to North Carolina. And when I talked at the beginning of the show about when kids commit to Narduzzi and Pitt, 
you know, there's a good conversation in that office beforehand. Uh, you know, they talk about those things. Are you done recruit? Are you done with your recruitment? We good uh, because he doesn't want this stuff happening and uh, meaning decommitments later. And when he, when the kid decided uh, and Hey, I'm not criticizing the kid. I want to be that straight. I want to be very straight on that. But once he made the decision to uh, go visit North Carolina, uh, I think at all intents and purposes, that ended his time at Pitt. Uh, he can say he decommitted. Uh, I would probably choose to say that uh, they helped him decommit and uh, uh, made the decision very easy for him. Uh, I, I think once he they found out that he made a visit, I think they were – uh, aside from the special kids that maybe they have very high on their recruiting board, they weren't going to go out there and try to recruit any more, bring any more defensive backs. Once he decided to uh, make a visit, uh, I think they opened back up their recruiting board for defensive backs. I think they know they viewed, this is my opinion. Uh, they no longer viewed him as a commitment and looked at it as though they had another spot that they could possibly fill in the defensive backfield possibly uh it's this fourth one but i'm led to believe that the third commitment as well uh could be uh, uh another defensive back so they uh that guy hasn't announced yet not sure exactly why but uh wouldn't be shocked at all if uh the one decommitment or the one commitment today that hasn't been publicly announced were revealed by the recruit himself. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked at all if that guy is a uh, defensive back as well. So that yeah, that's basically what happened. Uh, obviously, Lewis is most likely now uh, going to end up in North Carolina, and so they'll match up uh, over the next few years. We'll see how uh, we'll see how that works out, and it'll be interesting to see how his career goes and the guy that was maybe brought in because of uh, Shelton Lewis decommitting. It's interesting. I mean, it happens. It happens in recruiting. Uh, these guys post, you know, go on other visits, post that on social media, uh, pick up other offers, post it. You know, each staff use it differently. And uh, that seems to be the way Pitt went with this one. So um, I, I think I think one other thing, guys, is, you know, we'll be honest, this is – this is. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think this can carry over to a lot of things in life. I think if Shelton Lewis was maybe a high four-star recruit or a five-star recruit, um, Pitt may have given him a little bit of leeway and tried to recruit him back. Uh, not to say that he wasn't a big recruit, but I think if you're going to try to do that, uh, especially with a guy like uh, Narduzzi, who's known for not putting up with that, you better be a high-star recruit in order to, uh, if you do hope to come back, have any chance of coming back and uh, just, you know, just straight facts. Uh, Shelton Lewis uh, wasn't that uh, high of a recruit that he was going to be able to try to pull that with, uh, with Pitt. That wasn't going to happen. So you said, you know, you're not going to reveal the fourth commitment, obviously. Um, but, you know, Pat's been sending out the, the Pat signal. I guess you'd uh, call it on Twitter for the past uh, you know, a few days, few weeks. So, um, you know, let's, let's hear some names. Who are some speculative names that, that we can talk about here um, that could be those three other commitments for Pitt right now? Hey, George, why don't you jump in on this? Uh, you want to start from last week? Because uh, that, that uh, not 100% sure why those two haven't been. There's obviously some, some reason behind that. Uh, there always is. But uh, there's still two commitments from last week's official visits that, uh, haven't been announced yet. Yes, I mean, uh, two guys last week. We had the two linebackers from last week, and and Raylan Lovelace and uh, Rasheem Biles, two linebackers, which is a uh, uh, kind of surprising. I mean, local hometown kid from Whippeal in uh, Lovelace, which is uh, he was a fast rising kid. Uh, he didn't have many offers until VT offered a couple weeks ago, and then he had Pitt, and that moved real, real real fast. And um, other than that, though, I mean, we have the two linebackers and a couple names out there. I mean, there's been talks about uh, the Miami uh, commit, you know, former, I guess, former commit now, uh, right, decommitted right. from uh, Lamar Seymour. Uh, Seymour. Yeah, yeah, he's a big, uh, big receiver from 
from a powerhouse team down there. And he's a, I mean, Pate already has two receivers uh, in Kenny Johnson and Zion Fowler. So, I mean, they're not hurting for receivers at this point, And they're obviously hoping to bring in a guy like Tykeem Williams. But uh, Lamar is a guy who has that strong connection with uh, Coach Underwood. I mean, he'd be a good fit to the system. He's someone to look at now. Now, especially that he's decommitted from Miami. Um, you got a guy like him. You have a guy like potentially someone like Jordan Bass, uh, the safety linebacker kind of hybrid guy who would fit the system well at Pitt, especially with his skill set from uh, Virginia. Uh, I know he's a, he's, a, he's a target who has been kind of a uh, high priority for guys like uh, Coach Manilax. I mean, it's there's a couple guys out there who, who could be – committed and haven't announced yet uh it's just it is kind of it is kind of curious now that we've gone a whole week and they haven't and there have been no announcements about the guys who have committed yet but um from last week the other two guys i feel like would be kind of priority priority one and two for for pit coaches right now yeah I, like? yeah I, I think it's uh, i think it would be a shock if it's not lamar seymour at this point i think the first process he wanted to do was once again, this is all just stuff that we put together. You know, he's a Miami kid. He committed to his hometown school. Um, and there were, you know, it was probably a top decision for him to uh, decommit uh, like he did, especially with uh, Crystal Ball going down there. There's a lot of hype with Miami now, a lot of people saying they're back. So, uh, you know, that, that's a heck of a recruiting job for Pitt to be able to get a kid to get out of that commitment. Uh, once he's already with the U uh, and being from Miami. Uh, so he decommitted middle of the week. And to this point, he hasn't committed yet. Uh, I don't, I don't know if it's a show just to uh, <laughs> uh, not disrespect Miami and to say that, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, I would be shocked if it's not him. And as Carl said, uh, all signs point to uh, Bass being the other one. Uh, He also issued a statement, a a Twitter statement this week saying no interviews, uh, his recruitment's open, he's going to make his best decision. I don't know what the, I, I, usually there's some sort of uh, uh, specific reason as to what's, what's going on with this. I'm a little surprised both of them haven't done it by now, but uh, as far as the, the two today, as I said, uh, I'm 99.9% sure I know who the first one is uh, specifically. Uh, as far as the second one, uh, like I said, my guess is it's a, it's a DB, and it wouldn't be surprised. My, my only guess would be that it's probably a name that uh, we haven't heard from yet. Um, maybe a name. Uh, I, I know Chris Peak this morning, uh, who does a heck of a job on Rivals and Panther Lair, he speculated this morning on his message board that uh, they could be getting an unknown visitor that's uh, already committed to another program. Uh, possibly uh, he didn't specify who that player was. Maybe I'm just guessing here once again, uh, maybe this guy that is the silent commit, maybe he's the, uh, the guy that, uh, uh, was the unnamed, uh, the silent guy that visited and maybe he has to go through the process of decommitting or whatever. But one other thing that's out there too, and I'll throw this out there because just as another name, uh, this is all about speculation, George, you know that. Um, A kid tonight announced uh, announced tonight that uh, he was going to be uh, announcing next Saturday and this is something for Pitt fans to keep an eye on. The longer this goes out, as far as no name being announced, uh, what's the guy? Philip Daniels, uh, another guy from Ohio. He's a lineman that visited uh, a couple weeks ago. He announced on Twitter tonight that he is making his decision this coming Saturday. So what I'm saying is the longer this recruit doesn't announce in the next day or two possibly could be Philip Daniels. And maybe tonight he told Pat Nardu and I'm guessing. So please don't say that Mike said that Philip Daniels is committing. All I'm saying is the way it works sometimes is maybe he called Pitt and said, Hey, uh, I'm in, 
I'm going to make the decision next Saturday, but I wanted to let you know ahead of time I'm committing so you don't take any more linemen between now and then, and then he can have his day next Saturday. That's just another thing to keep in mind if this uh, uh, other recruit from today doesn't become revealed. So that's, that's always a possibility as well. I want to shift over to, uh, you know, probably the biggest name around pit recruiting right now. Um, Hakeem Williams, five-star receiver out of Florida. Um, everyone, everyone's been talking about Hakeem. Everyone's been talking about, you know, his visit to pit this weekend. So, you know, guys, you guys are the experts on this. What are the chances uh, that, that Hakeem commits to pit? And what are you guys hearing about his recruitment, his trip to Pitt? Good, George. You could. Uh, this is big enough. Both of us can come on this. So you can. Uh, I want you to get your thoughts out first, and I'm gonna. While you're doing that, if you see me looking down at my phone, I'm gonna text my uh, our mystery commit and uh, tell him I'll join him in about five minutes. Well, I mean, yeah, Ike Williams, five star guy, uh, freakish athlete, freakish receiver. Obviously, he's a guy who would be a crown jewel, uh, probably the highest, highest ranked guy. I mean, he's a five-star across the board on, on most sites now, a top 50 receiver. He'd be, he'd be a massive pickup. And I mean, at this point, it's up against guys like Georgia. I mean, I've heard Georgia might be the favorite right now. Texas A&M's way up there with their, with their uh, recent push in 23. But Pitt, I mean, I think the visit could not have gone better for Pitt this weekend. I mean, he, it all starts with, with, with Coach Underwood. That has been his biggest connection. Uh, Underwood's been a, a superstar for Pitt this already in just, what, five months now? He's been a superstar. Um, so that connection with what they have going right now is is pivotal. And clearly, not just Williams, but guys love Coach Underwood. And uh, it's, it's shown with, the, with, with, with Williams. It's shown with guys like Kenny Johnson. Um, but with, with, with Hiking especially, that's a huge connection there. And I think that's probably his biggest factor. Is having a guy like Coach Underwood there, but I mean, also look at like on on Twitter, he's other he's other dance in the locker room with Coach Partridge, which is another guy from Florida. I mean, he has that he has two Pitt's two biggest hitters, and Underwood and Partridge are, are going for him hard. And I mean, if if those two guys are if, if if those two guys can't get him, I'm not sure who else from Pitt would or even just around the country would. I mean, those are two major guys, and it clear, clearly. To even bring him on an official visit to Pitt, that's a big time decision for him to make. And then to come in, come in there and have a great time. His mother is on Twitter posting about how great it is. The whole family seems to be all in. The coaching staff from his high school in Florida is all in. The, uh, at this point, there's not much else I could see Pitt doing to land him. I mean, that they haven't already done. I mean, it's been they the red carpet's out there. He's walked across it. He's had guys all on the carpet waiting for him. Uh, I, I, Pitt has done a perfect job courting him. It's up to him now though, to see what he wants to do. And if, if it's Georgia or Texas A&M, wouldn't be shocked, but Pitt has done a great job of jumping in that, into that conversation now. Or you put it perfect. <laughs> Everything you said uh, was dead on. Uh, it, it is not possible to recruit the kid better than Pitt has. Uh, and it's no slap at Pitt. It, it, it'll be no, uh, nobody should look at Pitt wrong if uh, they don't land him. Um, to be in the running for a kid like this, for anyone that's questioning how Pitt is recruiting as far as they, are they after kids or are they, you know, going after high enough prospects? Uh, you know, are they ta being taken seriously? The fact that this kid uh, is a five-star kid uh, possibly the best wide receiver in the country. And he uses, and he visits Pitt twice in the last uh, two and a half months. Um, that's, that, that's all you need to know. Um, they're obviously selling him on being uh, Jordan Addison or maybe better than Jordan Addison. Uh, they're, they're selling him on what uh, coach Wood can do for him at the wide receiver position uh, being his coach, uh, the bond that he has um, with him and his family, and the fact that they're going to get the, anyone can sell this kid on good, getting to the NFL because he has that type of talent. So some kids you try to sell that on, they don't need to sell it because everyone's going to tell this kid, and it's legit stuff. Sometimes uh, it isn't, but in his case, it is. Uh, this kid's NFL player. 
uh, now it's just a matter of who's going to be able to help him develop his talents quick enough uh, and develop him as a person uh, to be able to take his uh, game to the NFL and succeed. And um, the, the comments that I've, I've been uh, messaging him back and forth with his mother, uh, they said they had a blast here in Pittsburgh. They loved it. And obviously I'm going to talk to her a little bit more, hopefully either later tonight or tomorrow about specifically about what they saw here. But uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't count Pitt as a, I, uh, I'll end by just saying, I don't think it would be an upset anymore. I think the national media might view that because maybe they don't, they're not viewing it as closely as we are here. Uh, but uh, I, I don't think it would be an upset if Pitt lands uh Ike Williams. I, I, I think they're right in it. I think Georgia is probably the leader uh, just because of who Georgia is. Uh, but if Pitt's trailing Georgia, I don't believe it's by much after what happened this weekend. Seems to be that, you know, Taekwon Underwood and Charlie Partridge agree with you guys. You know, obviously they had a little encounter on Twitter tonight with, uh, you know, Coach Partridge tweeting out, <laughs> Yo, is that us? Uh, and then hashtag H2P. So, um, Taekwon responded, you know, talking about how Rocky found out ways to win. So um, that's tremendous. They're they're They know how to use the social media game. You know that George, uh, right. it's all over now. Uh, the way they're incorporating the, uh, Ivan Drago and, uh, Rocky Balboa, they're Rocky and all the, uh, you know, the Florida or the Georgia and Texas A&M and the other schools, are the uh, Ivan Drago. Uh, so, you know, we, end, we know who ended up winning that fight. Uh, we'll find out if uh, that's how it plays out with uh, Pitt versus the big boys for uh, the best wide receiver in the country. So, you know, you guys talked about some of the commitments they've already got in 2023 class um, with these offensive linemen coming in. You know, you've got Kenny Minchie at quarterback, some running backs, Alan Fowler, Zion Fowler at wide receiver. Um, but, What's next for Pitt? You know, they've had a strong June uh, so far, but what, what positions, uh, what kind of guys do you think they're going to be targeting in the near future, you know, to, to round out this class and, and to continue the, the highly ranked, you know, class numbers? Yeah, well, I mean, I, obviously there's a couple guys, a couple four-star guys who've been there already. Uh, Desmond Umiazola, uh, Jalen Thompson, two four-star edge rushers who would be, who were definitely high on the list, and they, they came in early. Um, they had both of them, by all accounts, had great visits, uh, positive on social media, positive everywhere about it. Um, and if they can get guys like that, that'll be a huge boost to what they already have in Antonio Kemen and uh, Isaiah Neal, who are also two strong pickups. But, but aside from that, from position to need, I mean, I think first off is tight end. Um, nothing there yet, so I'll get on that. They have uh, they had Zach Orway come in. They had Jackson McGowan come in with the uh, commit from who's a commit from Cincinnati. Um, so one of those two guys would be a nice pickup, or someone who hasn't been on official visit yet, who they could target down in the fall. Now um, they have a quarterback, they have a running back, they have some receivers, they have two offensive linemen now with chance to grow. They have some some D linemen, they have linebackers. They they've kind of they they have they have filled across they filled positions that need across the board. Um, there's still room to grow in on the offensive line, on the D line, uh, tight end. But all in all, at this point, it's kind of just with the official visitors waiting to see what happens with those bigger name guys like Hakeem, like Desmond, like Jalen Thompson. So at this point, it's kind of kind of a waiting game to see. Well, waiting game for them, but also to see when the other guys they haven't announced yet commit to. So I mean, it's. It's been a very good June. Hard to say otherwise at this point. Mike, you got anything to add there? On uh, no, I, the, the only I'll add is that uh, I think George touch, or Carl touched upon the uh, the positions. The only thing I'll say is that unless you're an elite recruit in Pitt's eyes, uh, and that's all in the eye of the beholder, there they have a recruiting board, and I'm sure they have guys like George mentioned or Carl mentioned. Uh, that they have up here, here. And then they have other he players down here as far as needs. They'll take uh, – they could have 28 kids in the class, and if Hakeem William tells them they want he wants to commit, they'll find a 
room for him. Same for a couple other kids. So only a few kids uh, have a chance to do that. And if you didn't commit by now, you just have to hope uh, if you're one of these players that Pitt is still recruiting your position. Because I'll be honest, Carl and I got a message tonight after I won't, we won't say who the kid was, but he asked us uh, who, who committed tonight to Pitt in what positions, because he's looking at his position and, and probably f- trying to figure out whether or not he, he didn't make a decision early enough. And that's the game that come, goes on right now. Uh, if you didn't commit and they already filled up that position, like obviously quarterback or something, you're done unless somebody decommits. So that's, uh, I, I think they're going to fill a running back. I think they're going to get a tight end. Uh, I think they might take one more defensive lineman and then the rest of it will be offensive linemen. Uh, they, they don't have many uh, positions they're going to be looking to fill. So if that your spot is filled up, uh, you know, you decided too late. We'll start wrapping it up here. Um, thank you guys for all joining on, Uh, Pittsburgh Sports Live, but we've got one more question. I want to ask both of you for your take on this. So, um, you know, Pitt's been getting a little bit of criticism, uh, the football program in in some circles, obviously um, not not everyone, but uh, due to the lack of of big offers, you know, that they're handing out to kids in the the 23 class and beyond, uh, some fans, you know, wanted bigger time, bigger recruits after directly after winning an ACC championship. And you guys firsthand have seen, how that ACC championship is, affects recruiting right away. Uh, but, you know, people are still kind of upset um, occasionally with some of these offers um, that they're not offering, you know, higher ranked guys. And, and Mike, uh, I'll start with you. What, what, what's your take on that? I, I just not to criticize the fan base, but um, that's why they're coaches and that's why they're fans. And that's why, you know, we're the media. They watch these guys. Uh, they study the film. They know players. Carl mentioned it a couple times. Guys that fit their system. That's what they look for. This, these are the same coaches that uh, recruited all the players that won an ACC championship last year. Um, I know everyone is in, enamored with four-star recruits and all that. All I know is, is hey. They might have taken some guys that didn't have a ton of offers, but I'll go back and I'm going to do this just because of this. I plan on doing a story, uh, hopefully tomorrow if I have time, if not the other day. I'm, I'm uh, on Tuesday. I'm going to name some guys that Pitt has recruited that weren't highly thought of by the you know fan base and other people, and have gone on to have pretty good careers here. And I'm just going to do. I'm just going. To, I'm not going to go all the way back. I'm going to do over the last few years under the Narduzzi. I'm not going to go too far back, maybe two or three years. They have offered a ton of kids that three, four years later, they look really, really good. And some of them are actually playing in the NFL right now. So I would trust this coaching staff. Uh, I I think I'm not going to call these kids out because it's, it's not fair, but some of the last few recruits, they didn't have big offer sheets. That doesn't mean they're not big players. Some of it's about, uh, opportunity at the school. Maybe they're just getting their first year as a starter. And that's, and it's, so there's not a lot of tape on there. So some of the bigger schools just don't offer until they see, but uh, I'll take guys like Fowler, Minchie, Harrison, Pollock, Neal, Kamen, Kenny Johnson. I'll take those guys all day long. They have huge offer lists uh, from power five programs. And there's some of the, re- the other guys, I'm going to trust guys like Charlie Partridge and Archie Collins and Corey Sanders. It's their ass on the line. They're not going to offer kids that uh, they don't believe uh, can't play. If they think they can play, I, I'm i going to trust their, uh, their opinion and their knowledge of this situation a lot more than I am of, uh, you know, maybe the lack thereof of offers. And by the way, this recruiting class that people are, uh, think it looks so bad. Last I checked, they were ranked 26th by rivals. So <laughs> well, I don't know what fans are hoping for. Do, do they want top 10? Is, is that going to make them happy or what? Having a class right now that's ranked in the 20s, um, I'll, I'll take that, uh, you know, seven days a week. 
Yeah, absolutely on that. I mean, you know, it comes down to trust and then coaching staff. If you trust Coach Narduzzi and the staff, then that's what, that's what it boils down to. And coming off the championship, it was it was guys like Kenny Pickett and Servasier Dennis and Habba Baldonado and guys like that who – Servasier was a two-star recruit on, on 2.7. Yes. He's one he's a, I was going to mention. <laughs> he's, a, he's, a, he's a potential potential NFL player now. NFL he's, player, he's, right. And, of course, the, the, they're, they're going to find four-star guys who are going to compete and hire a three-star. I mean, Kenny Minch, he's a four-star guy who probably should be higher. He's an elite, elite 11 finalist. Um, playing for Pitt probably doesn't help his, his star status right now. But uh, most, of it, most of last year's success came from guys who were – guys who were, like, in the 800 range of recruiting rankings, guys who weren't getting these huge, huge uh, or, uh, commitment shows on, on CBS Sports. It's the guys that, that, that Partridge and guys like Narduzzi found and brought in and developed into four-year players, which is in today's college football landscape. If you can find that, it's, it's, it's getting more and more rare. So uh, it's come down to trust in the coaching staff. If you, if you can do that, then I think, I think we'll be all right here. We will see over the next uh, course of the next few months, um, over this next year, you know, how Pat Narduzzi and his staff continue to build out this 2023 class and beyond. Uh, that is all we've got for you tonight. Thank you for tuning in to Pittsburgh Sports Live. I'm your host, George Michalowski, uh, along with Carl Ludwig and Mike Bukovkin. Always a great time talking pit football with the guys. So uh, let us know how we did, obviously, and uh, tune in next time. Thank you guys for tuning in.